Good morning. Welcome to Christ the King on this third Sunday after Pentecost. In today's text, we hear that we have no good apart from God. That makes Jesus' call to follow him an invitation to freedom. This is freedom to revel in the Spirit's fruits, love, joy, peace, and patience. This is freedom to not be imprisoned by anything that would keep us from the fullness of the life God has given us. This is the path of life. We pray together. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior, Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. God of mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. We will remember all the wonder, joy, and mercy which is ours. From the rich abundance of these blessings, we know that in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. We are free to love others as God loves us. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, we bring before you the cries of a sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us, and defend us from everything that is evil, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Spirit of God, breathe in us. 
Today's first reading comes from Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 and 13 through 29. For Paul, the freedom Christ gives is not permission to do whatever we want. It is the invitation to be what we could not be otherwise. The power and guidance of Christ's Holy Spirit produce a different kind of life, one marked by the fruit of this Holy Spirit. A reading from Galatians. For freedom, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you as I warned you before. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to, Jesus, to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Today, we meditate on a musical offering based upon Psalm 16, performed by poor Bishop Hooper. I say to the Every good thing I have comes from you, comes from you. I said to the Lord, you are my master. Every good thing I have comes from you, comes from you. I know that the Lord is always with me. is beautiful. 
beautiful, beautiful. I said to the Lord, You hold my future. Truly, my inheritance is beautiful, beautiful. I said. Presence is pleasure forever, and that's where I wanna be. Oh, yes, that's where I wanna be. The pleasure of living with you, the pleasure of being with you. The gospel reading for today comes from the gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verses 51 through 62. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus is unwavering in his commitment to his mission in Jerusalem and will not be swayed by pettiness. In a series of striking cases in point, he calls his disciples to a similar single-mindedness. Reading from Luke. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I recorded, oh, you turned me off already, okay. Our recorded sermon today is provided by Abiding Hope intern, Pastor Lindsay Bates. At church camp growing up, we would do this skit. Some of the staff would get together and they'd be, you know, praying in a house. And one of them would pray like, God, we just want to meet you. And they'd hear this voice that would say, okay, I'll come over for dinner. And everyone would get frantic. They'd say, Jesus is coming over for dinner. Jesus is coming over for dinner. And they would start preparing their home. Maybe you've prepared your home for someone coming over for dinner as well. They started cleaning and organizing and cooking. And then someone knocked on the door and they said, help, I've, I've broken my arm. Can you please help me? And they said, no, I'm busy. Jesus is coming over for dinner. I'm sorry. And they'd close the door. Someone else would come and they would say, help, I lost my cat. Can you please help me find it? And they'd say, no, we're sorry. Jesus is coming over for dinner. We're busy. And they'd close the door. Someone would come and they would say, I'm just, I'm having a really hard day right now. The world feels like it's crushing me. Can I please sit and talk with you about it? And they'd say, no, Jesus is coming over for dinner. We're too busy. And they'd close the door. They'd go through multiple cycles of those people coming to their home. And then they would cut to them sitting around an empty dinner table, twiddling their thumbs. 
finally they would pray again and they'd say, God, you told us Jesus was coming over for dinner. Where are you? And the voice would say, I came. I came with a broken arm. I came to you missing my cat. I came to you needing to talk. And you sent me away each time. You see, they'd, they'd miss the point that Jesus coming over for dinner was us coming over together for dinner and coming together and loving one another. In our text today, we have a similar and also pretty different story. We have a story about Jesus on his way to Jerusalem, set on love and life, set on the cross, set on the ending of his time on earth, set on the Easter story, and nothing is going to get in his way. He's not getting distracted by being frustrated that Samaritans don't understand who he is. And he tells the disciples not to get distracted by these human tasks, right? He says, let the bed, dead bury their own dead, which might sound a little bit harsh to our modern ears. But what, what he is saying is we are focused on love and life winning. That is our goal. And so any other tasks that don't fit into that, we're going to let fall away. It would be as if those folks heard that Jesus was coming over for dinner and they were like, okay, great. And they just sat down at their table, no food, no cleaning, no nothing. And then they waited to see who showed up. When we talk about being on the way, we are all on our way to choosing love and choosing hope more and more often. And so we're on the way to understanding our tasks through that resurrection lens. As if we are set on Jerusalem, we are set on showing the world that love and life win, that God loves and cares for us so much that grace abounds in our world so deeply that the only thing that wins is love and life. So our to-do list, if it is not for love and life, does not win. Being right in an argument, if it is not producing love and life, does not win. Whatever goals you might have for yourselves, do not win if they are not producing love and life on the way. We are set on Jerusalem, which is to say we are set on lives of resurrection. And it doesn't mean we do nothing. I think in this day and age, if we were to just sit down at our tables without any food or cleaning, I'm not sure how many people would come to our doors, right? We live in a different world than this skit was maybe designed for. But it does mean that we run what we're doing through our tasks. When we wake up every morning, we set our, our goal on choosing love, choosing hope, and showing that love and life win. And so maybe some of our tasks don't happen, and some of them happen more deeply than we thought they would before. Someone told me the other day, they said, do you have anything on your to-do list that you just transfer from week to week to week and it never really gets done? Well, if it's not, you know, your taxes or something you can get in trouble with the government for not doing, maybe just stop transferring that. Because if it mattered, you would have done it. Unless that thing is the one thing that does matter and you're getting distracted by the world. Jesus inviting the disciples to come to Jerusalem without saying goodbye to people, without burying their dead, isn't that he doesn't care about their relationships. It's him inviting them into this life that will be so much more full, so much more real, that will, will cost a lot. It's going to cost them giving up the lives that they knew, but it will produce love and life in a way that they never thought possible. And that's our invitation today our invitation into a life full of love, full of doing tasks with, with meaning and finding a way that whatever you do at work or whatever you do outside of work or in school, you are, you are connecting that to your goal of loving more people, of finding more hope in our world. That whatever you do with your family, it would be about deepening that love. Whatever tasks you do that are about showing the world that you're successful or maybe just because you've always done them, their habit, maybe let those go and find something that will connect you deeper in love. 
Maybe you haven't spoken to some friends in a while because of busyness or silly arguments or things that are not about love and life. And maybe you reconnect with them out of love. You say, I'm sorry about whatever happened. I love you. And I want us to be together so that we can deepen our love. Our text today is a couple different sayings sort of chopped together, but it's really simple that we live a life of meaning and of love. On our way to choosing love and hope, we will get distracted. We will have days where we turn Jesus away from our houses. But that's why we're on our way. We're not, we haven't arrived yet and we're not going to arrive, but we're going to continue to wake up each morning and choose love, choose hope. Amen. Let us confess the faith of the communal church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. God of faithfulness, set the face of your church firmly on you. Rooted in your self-giving love, May the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. God of grace. God of gentleness, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where there are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes, habitats, and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters. God of grace. 
God of peace, guide all who govern, that they place the good of their citizens above self-promotion. Anoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love. Protect refugees and all who live under tyranny or conflict. God of grace. God of kindness, reveal your healing presence to all who are sick or dying. Uphold those who grieve. Support the needs of any who are unemployed, hungry, or have nowhere to lay their heads. We pray especially for Bill Markheim, Harold Walker, Gail Larson, Dorothy Briglin, Jim Moss, Eric Larson, Scott Brundage, Justine Ager, Brian Braun, Bob Scrivano, Heidi Simon, Erin LaBelle, Eugene Scarborough, Mary Lee Wines, Sam Albert, Elizabeth Bowick, Marilyn Nowaki, and Kent Masoner. God of grace. God of love, attend to those struggling with addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving companions as they work toward health, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in your presence. God of grace. Gracious God, we pray for an end to the violence that has spread through our communities, our country, and our world. We weep for those who have lost loved ones or suffered the experience of these acts. We weep for the separation of families and children due to the wars of aggression. In the depths of pain and anger, we come before you. By your love, heal us, convict us, and renew us to support just actions to alleviate this violence and aggression. You are our only comfort and hope, as you know the depth of our suffering. God of grace. God of every time and place in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our heart into your holy keeping. We pray together. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. From where you are seated, here or on a screen, please share a sign of peace with those around you as we prepare for Holy Communion.
So with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We remember that in the night before he showed us the full extent of his love, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples to eat, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup blessed it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. With whatever form of elements are before you, because God loves you just as you are, with whatever you've done or left undone, and in spite of anything that the world says about you, we proclaim together that we are welcome to receive these gifts from God's table today. For in Christ, all means all, and the gifts of God are Today we will celebrate communion as one body at the same time. I will offer the words for you, for us here in person and for all gathered online. I invite you to prepare your wafer or bread and to prepare the grape juice or form of drink you have available to you. Let us now receive this great meal of unconditional love, the bread of heaven and cup of grace. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever.
Christ without our safety, Christ within our joy. Oh, if we be faithful, can our hope destroy? On our way rejoicing, as we forward move, hearken to our praises, O oh, blessed God. give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your love. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace. We pray together. God, God sends, sends us forth with joy, joy in our hearts. hearts. Jesus, Jesus calls us to step out of our fears into lives of witness, and, and the Spirit teaches, teaches us new ways of grace to share the resurrection story with all who seek healing and love. May the God who raised Jesus from the dead bless us and keep us. May the light of resurrection always shine on us with its never-ending grace. May the reality of the empty tomb and God's presence with us forever always give us peace. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.